And hello and welcome to my tech channel. And today I'm going to show you my internet connection. I just installed it a few days ago. Uh, let me just show you the uh, fiber optic. Uh, I believe that is a repeater, right? Anybody know what the actual term of that is? Let me know. And of course, over the utility poles. And it's connected right there. Let me zoom out. And it's coming down my wall here. And this is it right here. Okay, it's fiber optic. <clears throat> and it's going down this. And this is the old copper. And this is the old uh, coax that's going to the first floor. Uh, we are going to discontinue that. That's 300 megabits per second and 30 megabits, uh, 35 megabits plus upload. That's the old one. That's the old uh, coax. And we're using now fiber. This is the fiber. And it's going into the basement. And I know I got a mess here, but I'm going to eventually put a box there. And of course, I got to fill that up with silicone. Okay, so this is the fiber optic now. And it's made by uh, Corning. Yeah, Corning. And they're known for... Uh, I first heard about them about the bakeware. You know, they, make, they, basically, they basically make glass products. So, that's interesting that they make the fiber optic lines too. Pretty interesting. Okay, so now we're going to go inside. And now we're in the basement. So this is the modem slash router from Altis, also known as Optimum Online. And the plan is one gigabit up, one gigabit down. Okay, one gigabit download speed and one gigabit per second upload speed. And of course, this is the front of it. Let me show you the front of the... Uh, the modem, okay. Just gonna show you that. I'm sorry for the shaking, but um, this is not gonna be a, a long video for this part over here. Of course, this is the telephone for telephone. This is, of course, the uh, LAN. And I got one going to the streaming computer. I have this one going to the next room to a 100 meg uh, a gigabit switch in the next room. Um, the old D-Link switch. And this one is going to the home lab, which you can hear in the background. And this one is the fiber that's coming from the terminal. Okay. That is uh, the WAN. And, of course, that's what we saw that was coming from the street so it goes into this terminal and then it go that, that fiber goes into here okay so that's the plan that I have, I have one gigabit download speed one gigabit per second upload speed and I'll put the model of this modem router in the description below and now I'm going to show you the uh, home lab And of course, this is my home lab. And we're gonna start from up here. Of course, that's an old Acer uh, D screen. Uh, a lot of the stuff, uh, I usually, uh, it's all either trash fine or I bought it on eBay, okay? So let's start from the bottom and work, I mean, it's on the top and work our way down. Um, yeah, this is an old um, Bay Networks 100 megabit switch. Uh, model is Bay Stack 350T. Okay. And of course, right below that is the Firebox Watch Guard. This is an 8 port. Um, right now it's not on because um, I'm having an issue with trying to install PFSense on it. And it uh, doesn't want to play nice with the CF card that I put in there. It doesn't seem to uh, want to boot from it. I tried several different CF cards. 
and I'm having no luck. I'm trying to get that to boot PF Sense and uh, to install it. So I had to put that thing. On. I had to put that project on hold for now. But um, this is the I I really wanted to run this with the PF Sense. It is working, but if, and unfortunately I break the original. Uh, Firebox OS, but then again, I wasn't gonna be able to use it with that original one anyway because that is a uh, proprietary system, and it costs thousands, uh, I don't know how many thousand dollars to uh, set that up and all that. And you gotta pay some fee for that, which you know I'm not going to. So you know, people buy these things for like they're cheap. Um, I think I paid about forty dollars for this one. Uh, yeah, about forty dollars. But right now, unfortunately, I cannot get the uh, the CF card to, uh, you know, it doesn't want to see the CF card for whatever reason. So I finally said, you know what, I just gave up on that for now. And hopefully in the future I can figure that one out. So any tips, let me know in the comments. And this is a patch panel. Of course, this is the one you snap on. Because, uh, you know, it's a small network, so I'm not, I don't need to be uh, punching, uh, you know, using the network punch tool and all that. I don't need to do all that. You know, I'm, uh, I, you know, yeah, it's good. It's, it's good to, if, you're, if you're a network engineer or whatever, or network admin or something, and you want to practice that stuff, that's fine. But for my purposes, I like to snap on on both sides. Works for me. This is 24 uh, port. Patch found more than enough that I'm ever going to use this for my little home lab. I'll put the link on that in the description also. It's from Cable Matters. I bought this through Amazon. So I bought the uh, patch panel. And then I bought a bag of these. Snap-on. Because you can you can snap on different types. Not only um, the Ethernet type. Okay, but you can also snap on different other types. And then, of course, I got my switch here. Let me put this uh, camera down here. Let me just move it down here. Okay. I'm sorry for the shaking and all that. But, uh, anyway, this is just an old switch that's there. That's an old... Uh, what do you call this? Uh, it's not even... Uh, neck gear. Yeah, it's an old neck gear switch. Uh, unfortunately... Um, that one, I get what they call it, they call it the, uh, you see the blink of, blinking, the blink of death or something. Anyway, it has to do with, a, I think, a, a couple of capacitors, uh, going bad. So just a matter of swapping it, so that's something in the future if I want to, uh, uh, fix that one. And I don't really have use for it. Of course, this is the, over here, over here for this, this switch. There's a model there, 28, I believe it's 28, 10, 24G. So it's a, it's a 24 port switch. Okay, I think I paid, I think I paid like $50 for that switch on eBay. Um, it's a good switch. I mean, it's good for what I need it for. Unfortunately, um, I connect to it to pu using PuTTY, command line, you know, uh, you know, like a terminal program called PuTTY. It works fine for me, but there is a, a web GUI that you can connect this to. Unfortunately, it requires a Java, and it doesn't want to play nice with my browsers. I tried uh, several different browsers on my desktop machine over here and I'm having issues with it so I just connect to it through putty and if I knew and if I need to do anything there that's how I do it I go to go through putty so that's the downside about this uh, HP switch it, it needs it, that web GUI has to run on some Java I, I don't know why it why they did that but if I would have known at the time when I purchased this um, I mean, I got a good deal on this, but 
I would have just bought another switch, another brand of uh, another type of switch. Because uh, unfortunately, I cannot go through the web GUI or the web interface because of some Java issue. Yeah, so it is what it is. And let me lower this down. I'm, I got this in the tripod. Let me just lower it down a little bit here. And I think I paid about 50 I think it was about $50 for that switch. I'm trying to remember, it was like $50. Could have been a little bit less, maybe $46. And of course, this is for, to log in the console. Uh, but, I mean, you know, it's, it works. I just have to go through Putty, you know, SSH. All right. And of course, over here, I got some old hard drives. This is an old uh, Mac store. This is an old drive that's in there. This is a two terabyte. Uh, what's the digital hard drive? This is very old. This is a Nexstar NAS. It's 500 gigabyte. And of course, that is a docking there for both sizes, uh, Siri ATA. Mm. I'll put I'll put the uh, the link for this because this is pretty good. I like using that. And then if we go down here below, this was given to me. <clears throat> of course, I don't have the power adapter for this. This is a proprietary type power adapter, um, so I don't even know if it works or not. This is just a switch, a telemetry, uh, what do they call it? telemetry, I looked it up. This is medical, Phillips Medical. This is a telemetry switch. A, you know, I see the ethernet here, so it looks like, you know, a, a, like a 10 port switch. Um, however, I don't have the, like I said, I don't have the power adapter for that, so I just put that there, and you know, I may just use the case for this. And I get this out and use this case for something else in the future. So that's why that is there. And right below that is the Sophos. This is an email security. Let me lower this down a little bit over here. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this a little bit lower. Just give me a second. I'm gonna bring this a little lower. Let me holding up the camera. I'm just putting on a tripod, but I'm lowering the tripod now. I know it's a pain. But I don't want to speed this video up and not describe as best as I can everything here. Okay. So this is a Sophos email security ES1 ES1100. Um, I think I paid like uh, twenty six dollars or something. I don't know, under twenty six. It was pretty, 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 could have been around thirty dollars for this. Um, I seen a video on it. And um, I seen a video of somebody put PF Sense in. I was thinking about putting PF Sense in, but when I open up this box, a lot of this stuff is also computer, consumer grade. Um, yeah, computer. You know, even though you know when it first came out, it probably cost uh, you know, I don't know how many uh, thousand dollars, whatever that this costs. But this is all consumer grade. If you open this up. So what happened when I opened this up, this is a basically a Pentium dual, dual core, uh, 2 gigs of RAM, so there's not much in there. Uh, also, 500 gigabyte hard drive. So, usually when I get this stuff, what I do is I put Windows 10 in it just to test it, just to see if, if uh, all the hardware is working. So that right now this has Windows 10, but I will up, upgrade the RAM on this. But again, this is a Pentium dual core, and there's not much I'm going to do with this. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I may just use it for some kind of testing or something. But again, you know, um, I was disappointed when I opened it up. It was a Pentium dual core. Unlike the next one, I was very surprised what was inside that one. Okay, so the next one is the Barracuda Web Filter 410. Okay, and that one, uh, Barracuda Network, 
and that one I saw videos a couple of a few videos on it and when you open this one up and this one I paid about I think it was around forty eight dollars on eBay it was a good deal on this one because when you open this up it is an i7 processor Intel i7 processor uh, 16 gigs of RAM okay and off the right off the box when you you can uh, when I brought when I received it I put Windows 10 in it just to see if it runs it runs fine of course there is a proprietary network card that goes in I had to remove that and it has to connect some relays um, so these you can't use these are anyway these are not even in use right now I had to install an internal inside I had to put a, a dual gigabit Ethernet card to get to run um, VMware EXXI and that's what I'm running in this one, EXXI. Just testing it out. And uh, it's running fine. It runs well. Again, it's an i7. And it's right here. This is the EXXI that's running right now. The display is right there. Okay, so you can see i7, 3.4 gig, 16 gigs of RAM. Okay. So that's the one that running that one. So again, the Barracuda network, you know, this is these are good for like, uh, like I said, you know, I'm pretty good. You know, I seen people use it. I people try to use. I seen one video that somebody try to use it as a game, gaming uh, PC. Yeah, that's not you're not gonna do too well because the video on it is not that good. Okay. And then the one below is the HP Proline BL360 G6. Okay, and this one is uh, what is it? The uh, it's a dual, it's a quad core, uh, dual quad core E5520. I was running around 2.27 uh, gigahertz. Um, it has 64 gigs of RAM. And um, right now, this one is, looks like it's going bad. This one is not in use. So I'm, I have three drives only in there. Um, they all have, it is just solid state drives. Uh, right now, it's running Windows 10. Because again, I just, when I usually get the server, these, this, this, I usually put Windows 10 just to see what, what you know, what, what's the hardware that's running in there if it runs. Uh, you know, stuff like that. And then eventually, um, I probably have this one running. Um, I probably install Proxmox on this one, or VMware, ESXi. But I'm looking toward Proxmox. I, I like Proxmox, and that's what I have in one of the computers out there. I tried Proxmox and it's working. It works better. So I like Proxmox, and this one I believe I paid. Uh, I think it was eighty nine dollars. It's kind of it's an older server, but um, for what I what I for what I what I use it for, it works fine. I notice it's not as noisy as the uh, the next the bond the uh, the last one I'm going to show you, which is the uh, Dell. Um, so of course I could take out the DVD ROM and I could populate four more drives, so for a total of eight. Right now I'm going to leave it as four. And this one is probably, most likely is going to be running Proxmox or something like that. Okay, and let me take it out of the tripod because we're going down to the bottom here. And um, so that one I paid about, um, let's sit on the floor now here. <laughs> so I paid about, I think it was $89 or so for this one. Okay. And this has this, uh, I'm sitting on the floor now, so. And then at the bottom here, I have this old, um, 
And this was, uh, it just had some old uh, videos and photos that I had. Uh, they're not running right now. Um, these are all trash. Uh, I have a few more there. Yeah, I found these in the trash, so somebody was throwing them out. You know, various, and not all at once, but, you know, different times. This one, I believe, was in the office, and somebody was throwing it out, so they gave it to me, along with a couple, with a few Dells. And this one was a trash can and down the block. I saw it in the trash, and it works fine. And this one, I have Windows 10 in there. I just uh, had Windows 10 in it, just setting it out. I don't know what I'm going to put in this one. This one has uh, 12 gigs of RAM. It's a quad core. Um, I forgot what AMD processor is in there. I'm sorry for the shaking. I'm down here now. And this one was another one that they were throwing out in the office. This one is an i5. And this one has uh, 8 gigs of RAM. This one, I believe I have, um, is it Sig Sigma, Sigma, Sigma NAS. He's kind of like a free NAS, free NAS uh, clone. I was trying it out. But I'm going to probably wind up doing that on, on the bottom one, the last one. Oh, good. that's another hard drive there. It's a four terabyte hard drive. I'm backing up stuff on that one, too. Mostly uh, videos and, you know, family stuff. Photos and other. And last but not least, the bottom one. There's a Dell. 2950. Yeah, it's pretty old. Um, it has six drives on it. Okay. And this is the one that I have uh, my stuff backed up in now. Of course, it's Windows 10, but I eventually, um, I'm, I'm in over, I already backed it up, actually. I uh, just got, a, I think I have one more area to back up, and that's it on this. I think another couple of folders. And then I'm going to wipe this out. And this is probably going to run that program, Sig, Signa, Sigma NAS, or another NAS software. Because I know Free NAS is now, I believe it's now, uh, it's no longer free. <laughs> it's, I think they renamed it or something is going on with it. Y'all can tell me in the comments what it is. And this one is the one that's really noisy. So I'm going to fire it up and you're going to hear how noisy it is. And let me stand up. Stand up. And you can hear it is very. Usually when it fires up, it is uh, noisy. And then it kind of idles down. So let me go back here and show you the whole setup. Okay, so that is my setup, my home lab. And let me show you the uh, Mac over here. Let me show you the, uh, let me go on this side actually. It's more easy for me to go on this side. I'm just show you my KVM. I know I have a mess back here. KVM is a four, four monitor. USB and has to extra USB uh, KVM. Um, in the future, of course, I have my keyboard right here, and the mouse is over here somewhere. The mouse is over there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right there. Of course, future, I would like to have a KVM with a monitor all in one, and take this out and put it in there. I'm going to slide out with the keyboard, the monitor flips out, that would be nice. Um, that is a future thing I would like to buy. Uh, of course, I'm just going to wait for her to get a good deal on it. I'm not going to pay through the nose for it. Um, most of the stuff was either given to me or I bought it for a very, very cheap price. 
Um, nothing here is uh, outrageously expensive. Um, and that's the my, and also one more thing before I um, the only, actually the only thing that's uh, I don't want to call it expensive but it's the most uh, priciest here is the uh, this guy the, the rack itself uh, this is a 28U no excuse me 27U rack mounted steel very uh, rugged um, I bought this for $150. Yeah, $150 is a pretty good price for this. Uh, the company is called v Vor, v e v o r dot com. Is it dot com or dot net? I think it's dot com. Anyway, I'm going to put the link for this product in the description because this rack is, uh, I'm going to say, for $150, for $150, it's a good rack. And it also comes with the um, the casters, the wheels. Um, I choose not to put it on there because this floor is not level. Um, and I need to gut out this floor because this is a wood floor, but it's not level anymore. Um, but yeah, one hundred fifty dollars for this rack. Okay, it's solid. You can't go wrong with that. And it comes with three, of course, these three. Um, Brackets. Okay. There's a bracket down there. So you have that also. Okay. Um, I have no UPS right now. Um, I Well, actually, I do have one. And it's, I need to replace the battery on that one. But right now, I don't have a UPS. Of course, that's another thing I plan to have. We get UPS. But again, most of the stuff is not going to be running 24-7. I don't have nothing running for 24-7 um, because that will drive my utility bill through the roof, which is already is pretty high already. So, okay, so now it's fully running, as you can see. And um, it is kind of noisy, but isn't, it's... Uh, not as noisy as I thought it would be because uh, I sleep on the next room. But of course, I don't have this running 24-7 again. This one is eventually just going to be a NAS. And then this one is going to be uh, my virtual you know, virtualization where it's going to be either VMware, ESXi, or Proxmox. I probably lean into a Proxmox for this one. And then this one right now is running um, ESXi, but eventually I will probably just use that for uh, something else. And this one, of course, I don't know what I'm going to do with this one because this one, again, is a premium dual core. I don't have much use for that. Um, you know, can I put a firewall software yet? Yeah, I probably could do that. Firewall software, I probably put on this one. But I'm going to bump up the memory for sure. It only has 2 gigabytes of memory right now. Um, I would like to get it up to at least 8. And maybe I'll use that one. Because unfortunately this one doesn't want to play nice with a CF card. And just for PF Sense. So there you go. That is my home lab set up. And... Um, I'm going to go over here to my workstation for a minute and I show you my uh, actual speeds on the. Okay, there's my actual speeds. This fluctuates up to 700 and. So I, have, I think I've got 740 upload. So, there you go. And um, this, is, this is my uh, first video on the uh, tech channel. And of course, I have a radio channel, Danny Show Web Radio DX. I'll put the link below to that. And all my other channels are going to be in the uh, feature channels. So if you want to subscribe to my other channels, I also have a retro gaming channel, which I use that. And I also have other retro gaming stuff. And again, there you go. It's my home lab network. I'm sorry for all the shaking. Please don't put stupid comments like, oh, you could have used a tripod. Yeah, use your tripod. 
But, you know, I can only do so much with a tripod. So don't be a snapper head, please, because you'll get blocked. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And also, um, I'm going to be posting content like this on this channel. And I intend to do a bunch of videos and so on, just like I have on my other channel. So, why don't you give me a try? Subscribe to my channel. Okay? And thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.